I'm Ron Dobello, and we're here today with a very special guest, Mr. Gary May. How are you today, Gary? Good. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for coming today. Uh, Gary, uh, we understand that you are associated with the Detroit Pistons as far as part of your job. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. Actually, the, the main way I'm associated with the Pistons is for seven years now, I've been the associate producer for the Detroit Pistons on their broadcast. I see. Uh, separate from what you see, if you go up to the Silver Dome to watch the Pistons, my responsibilities are to see that the production aspects of the television games that are shown on Channel 50 from the road, mm -hmm. of which there are 20 during a season, are covered. My job is to prepare the opening closing segments, the highlights, the promotional announcements that might be run, uh, any special features involving interviews with players or uh, coaches or, or the likes are, are all ready and set to go during the game. And then, of course, the actual broadcast is handled on the road. Oh, very good. How did you ever get involved in a job like this? This sounds very interesting. I uh, actually kind of begged, borrowed, and steal, stole my way in. I've been involved now in the media since I was about 16 years old. I got involved in high school producing a, uh, uh, a show with two other uh, of my students uh, associate other pals in the school and we uh, decided to have a radio program. I don't know if in your school you have announcements that the principal sometimes make in the mornings. And uh, I submitted a script at one time and said I'd like to make this a show. Mm -hmm. And uh, they accepted it and for the last two years I was in high school we had a little morning show that lasted for five minutes every morning to do the announcements of the school. And that's really how I got started in the media. And then eventually just uh, worked up to uh, working with the Pistons and freelancing as a producer director. Okay, so you, even though you're associated with Channel 50, you're pretty much an independent uh, producer? Correct, actually my only association with Channel 50 is through the Pistons as an I independent. See. I really have very little to do with what Channel 50 does with the broadcast. It's my job to prepare all of the material and give it to 50 mm -hmm. so that they don't have any problem during the game. If they see it at time for halftime and they push a button and the halftime feature is already loaded and set to go on tape. I see. So you pretty much work in the background, the technical aspects? Is that uh, as producer, uh -huh. you know, on, that, on those features. Occasionally I might be involved in uh, directing a segment or directing something live as, you know, as far as the game goes, but very, very seldom. It's mostly uh, strictly as an associate producer. Oh, very good. They can't uh, afford me any more than I get really well. Just kidding. No, that sounds very good. Um, how did you get really involved, like, as far as working with the Pistons, per se? Uh, actually, I've been doing some sports programming work and sports production for several years, even uh, beyond my relationship with the Pistons. And uh, I'm a rotten basketball player, <laughs> but I've always loved the game. And uh, several years ago, uh, seven years ago, in 1979, I was asked, to assist them in changing the image of the team uh, as a freelance director at the time, writer-director, they were looking for some new direction for marketing of the club on their games that would you know, be on Channel 50. So that's really where the initial involvement came in. I wrote some ideas, I came up with a jingle that they used for promoting the team and came up with some unique different things to highlight the team and the members of the team during the course of the season. We used to you probably heard of uh, Wide World of Sports Up Close and Personal. Uh -huh. And what I did, uh, to, quite honestly, is I stole that idea and produced it locally so that during the course of the season it was kind of an up close and personal look at the Pistons. And that mm -hmm. started in 79, and nowadays it's called Piston Scrapbook. Oh, very good. Have you uh, worked with any other sport in the area? Yeah, I've directed for CBS and produced for CBS. Uh, occasionally they'll come into town to do either the Grand Prix 
uh, several years ago. It was a tennis match. I produced a tennis match for uh, the Slims uh, tournament up north. Uh, I did a, uh, several, you know, offshoots of, of different things. I've uh, been involved on in a couple of occasions as associate producer on football games for CBS when they come to the Dome. They classically, when a network comes to town, they don't bring everybody that works out of the truck for that game. They hire quite a few freelance people locally. Freelance is, is another phrase for an independent producer director as a freelancer, mm -hmm. which is what I really am. I see. Now, for a, a job like this, is this a uh, any way involved with like some of the, the television unions or anything like that? Or uh, Yeah, I'm non-union. Uh -huh. I, uh, I have avoided working with the unions for several reasons. Uh, and I don't know if it would make much sense to some of uh, your students or your viewers, but uh, the unions in Detroit aren't as established as unions, say, in Los Angeles or New York, uh, especially in terms of technical people. In a, in a market like L.A. or New York, and for the most part Chicago, uh, you'll find that the unions represent their people directly. They really are behind them, and in Detroit they're not doing that. Uh, most of the people who join the unions in Detroit do that only because of a guaranteed wage. Uh -huh. um, and then they go out and moonlight on the side and do <laughs> non-union jobs and don't tell anybody. But okay. So when, for example, CBS Network comes into town to televise an event, uh, they have perhaps a roster <coughs> of uh, people like you, expertise That's in correct. areas, that they can uh, uh, arrange uh, to work for them? Correct. Now, if they hire cameramen mm -hmm. in Detroit, which they usually will pick up a couple, they will be union. They'll be members of NABET, which is the National Association of Broadcast Engineers and Technicians. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they'll get some NABET cameraman. Me being a behind-the-scenes, in-the-truck kind of individual where I'm responsible for uh, producing a lot of the elements that are used during the course of the game and that were you know, produced several days earlier, right. I don't need to be a member of a union. Uh, I uh, am, am a member of several production associations, the Detroit Producers Association and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So those kind of tend to act as a liaison or a go-between between the unions and, and the networks. Mm -hmm. What would be an average kind of day for you, as far as uh, the background of what your job entails? I get up about 11 o'clock in the morning and I go get Katie and we... <laughs> 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 no, what, uh, uh, actually, the great thing about it is, is it's a 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week job. Mm -hmm. You have to be ready at any time. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no cut-and-dry schedule when you're a freelance producer. You kind of have to weigh the... Uh, the jobs that, that have to be done and organize yourself in such a fashion that some days I'm afforded the opportunity to sleep until 10 o'clock in the morning. It's real nice, but most of the time I'm an early riser. I'm usually up by 7 and ready to go, and, and by 8 o'clock I've had my ninth cup of coffee and, and look out world, here we go. So, and uh, that's, that's generally the, the game plan, and then we work everything in from there. Okay, how about like when uh, you know you're working on a program with the Pistons, for example? Um, do you show up at the uh, Silver Dome uh, very early to prepare, or is most of your work done before you even get there? The Pistons are notoriously late mm -hmm. for being ready to do anything. I hope Harry doesn't hear this. <laughs> uh, Harry Hutt is the director of broadcast for the Pistons, but they are notoriously late. Over the years, we've learned to uh, adjust our production schedules to, so, that, so that they don't feel like they're being pressured. And then they uh, either arrive with the materials necessary to assemble a show or the suggestions or scripts as to what we want to do and what we're going to go out and shoot that day. I have a post-production facility in Troy. Mm. Uh, we have a complete online one-inch system called the Finishing House, which is where we do all of our post-production. Oh, that's very good. Now, uh, um, how many people are involved in, say, a, a production of, like, say, when uh, a game of the Pistons is telecast over... Uh Oh, the airways in that, would you say? It generally, it, it varies uh, from market to market. It, it depends on the production companies. First of all, it depends on the dollars that one is going to spend. It really depends on the production companies. Most of the time, if you watch a game on television, a sporting event, you'll see four cameras. Mm -hmm. And if you have four cameramen, they're generally backed up with two people in the truck and running video. And then you have a director, a producer, a technical director, and we all know what that is, the man who pushes the button. Right. Generally, there's someone working the Chiron or character generator. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you have your associate people, technicians, there's usually one or two, and then you have an assistant director who will work the 
uh, the play-by-play -play table with your announcers, your play-by-play -play and your color announcers. Uh -huh. So you could see as many as, as probably 12 on a normal staff. And then by the same token, if CBS comes into town to do a Sunday afternoon game, I've seen 35 and 40. Mm -hmm. um, they, do they bring most of their people with them then? Or? They, they, essentially, CBS usually brings the core. Uh -huh. They bring their core, which to them, a core for a CBS broadcast is usually in the 20s, 20, 25 people, and then they pick everybody else up locally. Huh. I should say locally, regionally. Uh -huh. They come to Detroit out of New York, they might pick up some people from Chicago. Uh -huh. So, And that's generally how it works. Or same token, if they go to Chicago, they may call me and say, I'd like to come to Chicago this Sunday. Uh -huh. And I say, for the right price, I'll do anything. <laughs> that's very good. Oh, you must meet a lot of interesting people in the kind of job that you well, do. Well, I met you. Oh, well. <laughs> I met all these kids. Yeah. Everything this is great. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Um, I didn't mean to.